So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our session, Understanding Risk Through Games by the Earth Observatory of Singapore. So to, my name is Lorian Chardot, and I will be your host for this session. Um, during the, the session, there will also be my colleague, Mr. Jiang Hong Kuang, who will be speaking actually most of the sessions, uh, most of the session about our games. So the, um, the aim of this session, so we want to um, make you discover make you discover um, our dynamic Earth games. And hopefully, as uh, Jian Hong just mentioned, you will be able to play some of them. So the format is going to be very simple. I'll just give you a brief introduction about the Earth Observatory of Singapore and a very brief introduction about the dynamic Earth games. And then uh, Jian Hong is going, to um, is going to describe to you all the different games that we have, and you'll be able to play some of them. At the very end, we'll have a Q&A session so please feel free to post your questions in the chat and either I reply to them during the talk or we'll keep them for um, the end of the session. Okay, so just a brief introduction about the Earth Observatory of Singapore. So we are a research, a research center of excellence in Singapore, an autonomous institute for Nanyang Technological University. And we conduct fundamental research on earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, and climate change in and around Southeast Asia towards safer and more sustainable societies. So in particular, next please, for the later part of the sentence, towards safer and more sustainable society, we have a community engagement office. So we are um, a small group uh, doing mostly science communication and we strive to share the work and expertise of us of our scientists so we we are on um, different uh, social media channels like facebook instagram and twitter so please follow us and you can see updates from the scientific uh, findings of our scientists next please we also conduct education and outreach initiatives in the region so here just a few snapshots of our um, upcoming Earth, Earth Alive exhibition at the Sa Singapore Science Center, which is actually opening this week. So I strongly encourage Singaporeans to visit it. It's gonna be very interactive with many different exhibits to play with. Next, please. So to, to, go, to go deeply into the subject of games, uh, here is a very short introduction about the Dynamic Earth games. So our aim with those games was to create a series of games to be educational and to communicate key ideas about disaster preparedness, acting in uncertainty and enacting evacuation plans. So you can see on the right side of the screen, this is our logo. So hopefully uh, you will come across these games at some point and this is a very distinctive logo and I hope you enjoy it. Right, so good. So I'll take over from here. Thank you, Lauren. So um, the EOS actually developed seven games with uh, Boho Interactive, uh, a team in Australia. So these games were developed with our scientists to sort of prepare uh, our schools, right? Especially in Singapore, we have geography and most of the time geography is not seen as a science. So we want to bring earth science into this curriculum. So to engage the students, we come up with some games that actually help them to uh, learn more about earth sciences. And also one of the initiatives is to allow our scientists while they're going to field trips, they can actually engage the community in the local context, right, with the games. So I'm going to introduce you to these games. So as you can see, there are seven dynamic earth games. And if you look at this, the title of these games, um, the titles looks pretty interesting, right? And if you just look at them, you will have no idea how these games are played or what is it about. So the most striking one, right, is actually number seven. If you notice, it's called Save Grandma, which I'll elaborate to you the name. Why did it come about? Why is it called Save Grandma? Okay, so let's look at the first game that I have, right? This is called Sneaky Volcano. So Sneaky Volcano, okay, is actually a two-player card game. So it's actually a scientist versus a volcano, right? So what is, the, what is the role of each, each player in this case? So the volcano actually has about uh, nine signs. So nine different signs that it might occur before an eruption. So this signs, which I will introduce to you a little bit later, right? So the, the volcano actually has to play all these nine cards out. So to end the game. So in short, to erupt, right? It has to show, it has to play finish its hand. So the volcano will try to play finish all nine, nine cards. 
Then for the scientist, the scientist actually has some equipment cards, right? So for the scientist, he, is, he or she is trying to detect the signs before the volcano erupts. So the scientist will try to detect at least three. So to make it easier, out of the nine signs that the volcano will exhibit, right? The scientist will try to detect three. So once the scientist collect enough information, he or she can actually call for an evacuation, right? But in the event that the volcano managed to sneak past all the nine cards and play finish the nine cards, and the scientist did not catch the volcano in action, right? Uh, the eruption will occur and the community is not evacuated and disaster is going to happen, right? So to let you understand a, better, a bit more about this game, how about we play a game, right? So let's, let's try, try to play this game. So I'm going to be the volcano, okay? I'm going to show you the gameplay. I'm going to be volcano and you are going to be a scientist, right? So as of now, I think I only have one person in the, in the Kahoot. So I'm going to share this again. So for all, those who have joined in, right? Please uh, go to Kahoot, go to the website, right? Just key in the pin, uh, game pin, and I'll see you inside, right? So, so far I only have social goat, right? Social goat is in. So if I can have more players, it'll be more fun because if not, it'll be social goat versus me, right? Yeah, okay, more. I have Swift dog, right? Good. Okay, yes. The, the more player, the better it is. So it's, it's actually a poll, okay? Um, so you all will make an option. Then the majority, the one who make uh, the choice that majority of you chose uh, will be the one, right, that I will choose. So we'll wait for about maybe 30 more seconds for more people to join in. So, right, yeah, okay, there's four, six, seven of you in. So for the rest, if you need me to wait for you, let me know. Okay, if not, I will start, right? Okay, I will start this game itself. Okay, so, so I have a card, right? That's face down. You don't know what card that I actually chose, right? So, so I actually chose one of the cards face down and on your hand, you have two equipment, right? So I'm gonna let you all choose. So you, have, you can actually choose a seismometer or you can choose a gas sampling equipment, right? So what will your choice be? So now your Kahoot is loaded up. You can actually choose either A or B to try to test what sign am I exhibiting, right? So maybe you all can make your choices. So it's about 30 seconds. Yep, please choose quickly. Okay, so nine of you. Oh, okay. So majority of you chose B, right? So I'm gonna go with B. So let's see. So the card that I actually have hidden down is actually gas plume, right? So I'm, I'm having some gas coming out of me, okay. And when you chose the long-term gas sampling, and you notice that in your equipment card, there's actually an empty slot. So the physical card is actually, there's a card out there. And when you compare it to the normal volcano, the normal me in a normal day where I'm doing nothing, right? You actually, you actually spotted some smoke, right? Coming out, some gas coming out. So the scientist actually won. So it's one zero, y'all got one, me zero, right? So you actually detected one sign. That's good, right? So this is how you detect a sign. So let's go on to game two and see whether y'all are still lucky. Okay, so now I'm going to put another cut face down and there are two equipment here. So I'm going to move on to the next one, right? Don't worry about the score. Everyone should have the same, uh, yeah, the score is not important. So the second one, so will you choose visual monitoring, right? Or deformation sensing in this case? Do you think that it's something that you can see that I'm doing? Or is something that is moving maybe a little bit, you need to have some more precision, right? Using the deformation sensor to see if I'm actually moving a little bit, bit by bit. Okay, let's see. Okay, we'll wait for everyone. So one more. Oh, good. Okay, so, oh, okay. So majority chose deformation sensor, All right? So I'm going to choose with B now and let's see. Oh, okay. So I'm actually undergoing crater street steaming, right? And if you were to use deformation sensor, in this case, uh, you don't actually detect anything using this equipment because it's not the right equipment for the right job, right? 
So it's one versus one. So I get one, you get one. So I managed to now sneak past a card. Okay. So of course the gameplay will continue, right? Uh, I'm not going to play the whole deck with you. <laughs> okay. So, right. So there are actually nine different signs that the volcano can play. So these are only the three that I'm showing here. And the scientist actually has five equipment cards. So out of these five equipment cards, right, the scientist can reuse the card, but the volcano will just finish up the nine on, in their hand, right? So the scientist can reuse their equipment card again and again, try to detect something, right? So these cards are actually made to be very visual, very colorful and simple, so that um, people can recognize this, solve this, some of these features easily. And also they are made into small card packs, right? For the, our scientists also to bring out to uh, the few to actually uh, teach maybe the local community about some of this, this information then and share, right? So, right. Okay, so this is actually Sneaky Volcano. So if you are interested, actually we, uh, it's a PD, right? Because if we have the physical UR 2020, we'll be giving out this packs to you. But uh, never mind, watch out for our next physical session. So if uh, next year do allow, right? After the COVID situation, if you come by UR 2020, we'll be giving out, I think, physical sets to you if you drop by our booth. So the next game that I actually wanted to introduce to you is actually this game called Evacuation Bingo. Okay, so this is, uh, this is, this is one of my favorite games because there's a lot of uh, psychology involved. Uh, you'll see all kinds of character coming out. So what exactly is Evacuation Bingo? So for example, given a situation, now if the government uh, were to give an order, let's say there's a disaster coming, Right, right now, right at this moment where all of you, so the evacuation notice is given out. So please evacuate your house immediately, right? A typhoon is coming. How many of you will actually drop everything and just go to the nearest evacuation center? Any, any, not really, right? Most of you will still be, oh, okay, maybe, uh, maybe I have a one email I need to send out or maybe I need to get a cup of coffee first. I'm still a bit tired. Uh, I, won't, I won't do it immediately. Why should I do it immediately? So, so back to the more real issue. Right, people, when they receive an evacuation order, usually it's like maybe a few hours before, they will not evacuate immediately because we actually have some concerns that we need to address. So for example, if I have some physical disability, I might need some transport to help me to evacuate, right? And this transport might not be available. Or maybe previously during the evacu evacuation order is actually a false alarm. So I ran out of the house, I left my stove there, Right, when I come back home, my house is burned out, burned down, right? I, I, I'm not going to evacuate man, right, if it's a false alarm. So given our concerns that we have, we would hope to address these concerns first before we actually do evacuate. So these are what we call the milling period. So the period before people actually evacuate, right? They actually want to resolve some of this issue. So this game is about uh, this, this idea, right? So in this gameplay, we actually divided, uh, we will divide uh, the whole big group into family. So maybe actually two of two person per group, right, into one family, right, or so. And each family is given three concerns. So there are actually eight different types of concerns there. So I'm not, I'm not going to show you all, but I'm going to just tell you that there are eight different types. So they'll be randomly distributed. So each family will get about three, right? So within this four days, so this game is, will have four turns. So within the four days, at the end of fourth, the fourth day, the typhoon is going to hit the town. Right. So if you manage to address all your concerns before the end of the fourth day, right, you get to evacuate out safely and you're safe. Right? But if at the end of fourth day, you still have one or two concerns or worse, you have all concerns left, right, you will be there stuck in the city when the typhoon hits. Right? So it's not going to be nice. So how do we address our concerns? Now, uh, each family is given three concerns and also some token. This is your money. So you have about six tokens. Right? So there are three ways that we can actually address the concern. Right? So you can actually use uh, your own money, so four tokens, right, to address one of your own concerns. So it's not, a, it's not a community effort, it's just your own concern that you have. So it means that you pay four coins, you only address your own. Right? You can't address someone else's concern. Right? The second way to address concern, we did each day, right? the second way to address the concern is through a community effort. So we're going to predetermine a, a set amount of money, right? Let's say there are 10, 10 communities, uh, 10, sorry, 10 families, right? I'm going to say that, okay, if the 10 families, they are able to come together, right? And pull, uh, pull together 11 coins, right? 11 tokens, right? Then 
the community will be able to address one concern for everyone, right? So I'll randomly choose one concern. And if you happen to have that concern card, your concern is addressed. But if you don't, then too bad, right? So for this to happen, right, usually on the first round uh, for the community effort, we will have no communication. So the family will discuss among themselves, right? Not within each family, just within the family itself. Right? They don't discuss with each other right? and decide how many coins they want to give. You can give nothing. Right? You can give one, you can give two, or you want to give everything. Right? So as long as I manage to uh, collect the, the determined amount, right, the community will uh, solve one issue. Right? And lastly, right, the government, of course, um, the government is very important because they are here to help us. Right? So the government will actually come in at the end of each day right, and resolve one issue for you. So randomly, one, issue, one concern will be uh, chosen and it will be addressed. So any family that has that particular concern will actually uh, get it resolved, right? So moving on. So, oh, sorry. So we can actually see some of these uh, issues, right? Or concerns that we have on top. So random ones. So we have mobility issues, bad memories and so on, right? And this, the bottom part is the part where the community or the government comes in to resolve the issue. So one of the interesting thing about this game is that um, during the gameplay, most of the time we, uh, or most of the time we see that people or the family put themselves above the community. So I don't care whether the other family make it out on the fourth day. The important thing is that I make it out on the fourth day, right? So this is this is like I mean, in terms of games and in terms of uh, crisis, this might be one of the things that we need to address, right? So and especially when we play in the first round where there's no communication you realize that the trust starts to dwindle. So during the community effort, when we try to pull in the money, there'll be some community that say, oh, okay, maybe I'm not willing to part with my money. I'll just give out nothing, right? So when the total amount is not met, those who have contributed will start to not trust the rest, right? So eventually the community effort will not work out. So you normally the second day, everything will break down. Everyone will start to care about themselves anyway, right? So uh, this also brings an important outcome for us uh, to bring across to the student is that we can't get the community to usually work together during a crisis, right? So what we need to do is that we need to actually plan ahead. We need to set up some funds. So instead of waiting for the crisis to happen and collect the funds, we should start collecting funds, right? <laughs> then when the crisis happens, the funds can be activated to actually help people, right? So one of the, one of the fun things that uh, we do, uh, we realize that in this, this game is that um, eventually, uh, as the first round goes, right, when there's no communication, things doesn't work out, people start to say, hey, can I, can I, can I speak? Can I be a spokesperson for everybody? So there will be usually a leader that comes out and start to gather support and say, okay, maybe this family will donate one coin, you donate one coin, so that at the end of the day, we have enough resources, just enough resources to get the class, right? And you see that um, tomorrow, if, we, if you are joining our session, when you play this game, everyone can actually make it out alive if we work together, that's the thing. Right, so this game actually brings out a very important point that everyone can actually make it out alive, right? Okay, so the next game that I'm going to show you is this game called uh, Two Farm, Two Furious. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, some of you might be thinking, oh, it's a cliche name, right? It sounds like a movie, a familiar name from a movie, but yeah, okay. So we're trying to make this game called Two Farm, Two Furious. Now, in Two Farm, Two Furious, we, we are exploring another uh, concept that uh, most people have some issue with. It's actually on the idea of probability or likelihood. So one of the questions that we usually have is that, for example, if I tell you that we look at the meteorological data for today and say that um, there's a 60% chance that it's going to rain, right? Then tomorrow, let's say for example, 60% chance it's going to rain like uh, this afternoon and you happen to be going out. Uh, will you bring an umbrella? So most of the time we'll be thinking in our mind, can the weather station actually tell me, will it rain or will it not rain? It's either a yes or a no. Can you tell me that yes, it's going to rain or no, it's going to rain? So if you tell me yes, I'm going to bring an umbrella out. But most of the time, we don't work this way because we are not certain about things. There's too many variables. So we can only give a likelihood that something is going to happen. So in the event that we give you a likelihood, let's say a probability, how do you make a sound de decision to actually uh, go about with your daily life. So let's say, for example, if I bring an umbrella up and it's not going to rain, what's well, going to cost me, right? So we're going to play this next game very quickly also, right? Two Farm, Two Furious. So I'm going to share with you, right, this, this interesting game that I have. 
So the gameplay, the gameplay goes like this. So for example, just now I'm saying, let's say today, there's a 20% chance that it's going to rain, right? And you're going to bring an umbrella out. So how are you going to decide? Will you decide to bring an umbrella out or will you decide not to bring an umbrella out? So once you make a decision, I will, I will, I will, play, I will play the higher being, right? I will decide whether it rains or not. So how do I choose that? How do I decide? I actually choose from a bowl of bingo balls, right? So let me just see where they get. So there's a, there's a lot of bingo balls here. So from zero to 100, right? Oh, sorry, it's from one to 100. So I'm going to randomly choose one of them, right? And if it does, if I choose a number that let's say uh, is between one to 20, let's say if I show you all, uh, let's say I choose a three between one to 20, this event happens, right? 20%. But if I manage to choose another number, let's say between 21 to 97, 100, let's say 97, this event doesn't happen, right? So this is a chart. So let's now try to play this game. So I'm going to give you this scenario first before I go on to the next uh, in the Kahoot, right? When you get to make a choice, right? So for example, let's say you book a flight and accommodation for a family trip, right? To a certain country. And there are actually reports of civil unrest in the country. So it's going to be messy, you know. There's a chance, there's a small chance, 18%, that the airport might shut down. So when you're there on the trip, you might not make it back home. You might be stuck there for months or days, I don't know, weeks, right? So there's a chance that you will not come back home on, home on time. So the question is, do you, so knowing this thing is happening, do you cancel your trip and not go? Or do you still go ahead, right? So I'm going to, Code your right if you are in the Kahoot, right? Still in Kahoot, you can actually make your choice for this game tree now. Oh, wait, I think everyone is locked out. Uh, okay, so if you are able to, right? Sorry, I think I think most of you quit, quit the game already. Um, let me try to. Start it again, right? Oh, okay. So, or maybe you all just want to put your, your answer in the chat, right? Whether you would you would actually uh, stay at home or would you actually uh, go ahead with the trip? Right, just maybe, oh, sorry. Yeah. Maybe just share your answer in the chat group that you will stay at home or you'll go for a trip. So if you stay at home, you're going to waste thousands of dollars right because you can't get your money back for the air, air pay, uh, airport ticket right okay so some of you go ahead it's 80 percent chance you know it's not a high high probability that the airport is going to shut down okay right so most of you some of you make your choice so i'm going to play the hand of god now <laughs> so i'm going to choose a random bingo ball so as i choose okay so the number is 68. So the airport didn't shut down. So for those of you who actually stay at home, ah, okay, you actually wasted your money. So for those who en uh, went for a trip, yes, you en enjoy a day and you come back home on time. Right, that's good, right? Okay, so next one, let's go a bit more deeper, right? So the place that you are living in is actually low-lying. And there's a high chance now, it's a monsoon season, especially in Singapore, it's a monsoon season now. There's a high chance that the area that you're living in is going to flood, right? And you are not living in a high-rise apartment, you're living in a terrace house or, yeah, a one-story, right, terrace house. Okay, so if it floods, it's going to be quite messy. I think you, you, you wouldn't want to enjoy a floating bed, right, while you're sleeping, right? So if there's a 48% chance that it's going to flood in your area, are you going to grab your stuff and go evacuate to somewhere higher or are you going to just say okay i'm going to take the chance and stay at home right and just hope that it doesn't rain pray hard that it doesn't flood my house so maybe you can make a choice in your in your chat right you're going to evacuate or you're going to grab your stuff and go uh grab your stuff and go or you're going to stay oh evacuate stay home right Okay, so a lot of you are staying, evacuating. Some of the brave souls are staying home. Okay, so those who are staying home, I hope that your house is still intact. So I'm going to choose another, oh, 
You're gonna choose another bingo ball again. All right, uh, okay. Okay, whoa. <laughs> so, well, the number is actually 62, right? So for those who, of you who stay at home, you are lucky because it didn't ring uh, that hard, right? Your place is not flooded. So those, those who evacuated, you'll be like, oh man, okay, now I have to shift everything back home again, right? So I've actually made the evacuation for nothing, right? So this is, uh, yeah, it didn't flood, right? Good. So last one, okay. So last one is actually the main gist of our game. The main gist of our game, right? So in this, in the game that we have for two farm, two furious, okay, it's actually a farmer's dilemma, right? So as a farmer, let's say you're farming at the foot of a volcano, an active volcano. And every year, right, the scientist actually gives you a, a evacuation notice, right? Or a, or a notice, a warning notice that the chance that the volcano is going to erupt, right? And this particular year, the observatory actually told you that there is a high chance, 73%, the volcano is going to erupt, right? So being a farmer at the foot of a mountain, if the volcano erupts, it means that you're going to die, right? If you stay there, right? So the question is, will you now continue staying at your farm or will you evacuate, right? So maybe you can actually make your choice in the chat group. Will you evacuate or will you stay? Okay, I see everyone start evacuating, all right? Okay, so are you ready? So I'm gonna choose again. Right, randomly. Okay, so right. So this time round, the number that I chose is 39. So when I choose 39, it means that this event did happen. So the volcano actually erupted. And for those who have evacuated, you're safe and good. For those who have stayed, um, yeah, you will have not really survived because of lava, or you, you'll be busy running away from this lava coming down towards you. Right, and all the other aftermath, okay? So up to here, right, I'm gonna play until here and uh, we're gonna have more of these games tomorrow. So tomorrow you can actually play a bit more, right? I'm gonna actually talk a bit more about this game, some of the interesting experience. So from this, we actually share with the participants the likelihood, the concept of likelihood or probability, right? So if I, even if I tell you that there's a 99% chance of maybe something happening, it's not a certain that things will happen. Right, there's still a one percent chance that that particular event might not happen itself, right? So the idea is that given the probability or likelihood of something happening, you have to weigh the pros and cons involved, and what is the impact. So for example, if it's a rainy event, let's say there's a eighty percent chance of raining, and I didn't bring an umbrella, out, okay, the outcome is that at most I'm just going to get wet, drenched, right? Nothing much. But let's say there's a twenty percent chance that the volcano is going to erupt, and your life is at stake will you want to take the chance and stay or will you prefer to go to somewhere safe, right? So this is something that we bring across to the student. And there'll be interesting, which I will share later, there'll be interesting, uh, there's an interesting uh, mentality that the students actually showed us during this game. So yeah, uh, in, in a while, I'll share, to you, uh, share with you at the end of it, right? Okay, so another game that we have is actually Busy Mayors. So in Busy Mayor, okay, there, um, the whole class is actually divided into three groups, right? Each group is a town, right? And in each town, they are supposed to elect a mayor, right? Which is who is running, who is running for an election is going to get re-elected. This mayor has to do certain tasks to get re-elected. And there's actually two, another, another two important personnel to help him or her, right? There's a campaign manager. The campaign manager job is to make sure that the mayor actually stick to all the campaign events such that uh, at the end of the day, because you gone through all the events itself, you will be able to get re-elected as the mayor, right? And there's a community manager. The community manager actually manage the community, right? So he or she will make sure that whatever decision that the mayor makes is in the interest, the best interest of the community, of the town, townsfolk, right? So not, so whatever is good for the campaign might not be good for the community, right? So these three roles will actually be discussing, right? But at the end of the day, the mayor will actually make the main decision of doing certain tasks. Right? And of course, the rest of the people are the townsfolk. So townsfolk, you are there to make noise. You can actually right, uh, tell people about, oh yeah, I want to do this, I want to do that, right? and so on and so forth. Okay? So at the, in this game itself, because there are three towns, so our scenario is set in such a way that there's a typhoon that's going to hit 
one of this town. There's a probability. So if you look at the picture on the right, top right, you can see that there's actually a, a scale. There's a probability. So each town is div uh, there's a color given to each each town itself. So if a typhoon does hit your town, will you be preparing for evacuation or emergency, right? Or will you continue to go on with your campaign, right? So let's. So this is a game board that we have on the bottom, right? So day one to day five, right? So each day there's a task in the morning and the afternoon, right? For the for the mayor to actually do, okay, in order to win the campaign, right? Now with the probability of typhoon hitting, the mayor has a uh, decision to make each day. Do I, for example, in day one in the morning, do I continue to attend the blessing of a fleet because it's very important, right? I'm going to bless my my town is a uh, fishing. Town. So if I bless the fleet, okay, they're going to have a good harvest. Everybody's going to be happy, right? So if I don't go and bless the fleet, fleet, right, people are going to wonder, oh, what's this mayor doing, right? Such an important economy decision, and he's not doing anything. So given the idea that the typhoon might hit your town, will you choose to, for example, do one of the action on the top, like relocate some low risk patients to from the clinic to somewhere safer, right? Or prepare some hazard plan, or will you continue with your campaign measures? Right. So in this game, it's more of a role-playing game and people will make decisions right, and see at the end of the day whether their decision actually impacts the, the re-election or that decision actually helps them to avert from this disaster that's coming to their town, right, which is a typhoon. So they will actually learn from, uh, from this particular game itself, the students will actually learn what are the steps because we have actually a lot of uh, actions and decisions that they need to in order for uh, if uh, for a successful evacuation so they'll learn about what are the steps that we need to do right for evacuation and they will learn also to make informed decisions so you have to weigh between whether i should i do this if a uh, particular event a or should i actually prepare for an option alternative event b itself right okay so this is bz mayors okay and the uh, next game the fifth game Right, the fifth game that we have here is called press conference every minute. Right, so usually this game, right, uh, when we play this is normally the start, the first game that we play. Um, we do play this game when the group seems usually a bit lethargic because this game requires a lot of running, a lot of uh, activities, right, hands-on activity. They have to run around. They don't sit at a the table. They should do a lot of things at the same time. So press conference every minute. So what is the idea of this press conference? Now, um, during a crisis, for example in a government agency, let's say the central government agency, there's going to be multiple events happening, right? So maybe you need to, uh, there are some uh, fire hazards that some, the fire department needs to handle. There'll be security issues that the home team needs to handle, right? Or there'll be some other, other planning, right? That you need to do. So things are happening at different time frame and at different uh, time scale, right? So how do you actually coordinate between these different groups, right? And planning, to make sure that the evacuation uh, event is actually successful, right? And things don't go wrong. So communication and leadership is actually very important in this case. So when we have this game, right? For example, we have four events happening. So if you can take a look. So you notice that uh, on the, so do you all see my mouse? Okay, I'm just moving my mouse, okay. So you have the hazard plan. The hazard plan happens every 36 seconds, for example. The livestock evacuation happens every 45 seconds. Right, so time frame is 45 seconds. Press conference every minute. Uh, you're gonna do that. And shelter management, three minutes. So meaning, um, there has an activity called the hazard plan. So if you look at the bottom right, okay. So there's these cones that the students have. They're gonna line the cones in a particular arrangement that we determine. So every 36 seconds, they will have a set, a set arrangement that they need to line up. So they'll be changing this arrangement and lining up in this certain case, right? A certain way that they, they need to do. And for livestock uh, evacuation, there's another activity that they will actually do concurrently, right? So they have to move the livestock from one location to another. So, and every minute, the whole team, right? Has to come together in front of the camera to take a picture because in this case, we're going to tell them that because when, whatever you're doing inside the, the emergency center, you need to communicate to the public. So you need to have a press conference, press conference. So you gather together, have a press conference, release the information out to people. Then you can go back to do your own job, right? And of course, the last uh, one, the shelter management. So these activities are happening concurrently. So one activity is going to have uh, finished in 36 seconds. So it will repeat like, for example, hazard plan. Every 36 seconds, they have to redo the hazard plan, 
So they, we will check how many tasks they actually complete, right? If they miss one of the hazard plan, okay, so too bad. So at the end of this session, right, uh, we will actually look at how many, how many completed tasks that they have. So normally, when we first have this game, we don't give them much information. So we just tell them, okay, these are things you need to do. Go ahead and do it. And the first round usually ends up in chaos. So most of the tasks are not done because the groups are not arranged properly. So some people are not doing anything. So they're just walking around like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. So eventually, uh, they will realize that they need to appoint a leader who is directing uh, certain groups to do certain things. And this leader also acts as a timekeeper to tell. Because once you realize that once you're in, in, the, in the situation, let's say I'm doing hazard plan, I don't really take note of the time. I just keep doing what I'm doing. Right? So you need someone to be a timekeeper to actually tell you that, hey, you okay, you need to do certain things that uh, you need, your time is up, right? You need to quickly move on to the next one. Okay, so this is more of an action game that we get the team to warm up and yeah, and actually be more comfortable when we go on to the more heavy games where they sit down and discuss. Okay, so this press conference every minute. Right. So the next one, the next, okay, in fact, the next two games that are quite related together. So it's, it's a pretty big, big game. Right, uh, we have big bots there. If you look at the image itself, there are four tiles, right? So it's this game is called Sim City. So like like the if some of you who have played video games many years back, there's this game actually called Sim City, right? So Sim City is actually building your city from scratch from nothing. So the idea is actually originated from there, right? So in this case, we are going to build our city from nothing. So there are four tiles that we actually have, okay. So we have the volcano tile, we have the beach tile, grassy and flatland. So each turn, right, uh, the, the builders, okay, so there'll be a, each set of these uh, tiles, right, you, there'll be a group of people playing. So the group of people, they are like your builders or your settlers, your founder, right, the person who, who just settled in. So they'll decide how to build or where to place certain structures in the uh, beginning, right? Let's say you have a fishing, uh, fishing house, right, or you have a fisherman's uh, house, right? Where do you place them? And each of this tile, right? They actually have a certain cost. So of course, uh, if you were to make a guess, the cheapest tile out of this four is actually your volcano tile, right? Because volcano tile, who would want to build near a volcano? So it's actually basically this land is free, right? You can actually uh, build a lot of things there for free. So they have a set amount of resources or a amount of tokens, which they have to make sure that they use uh, properly, right? So that they can still continue building and upgrading our tile. To a better place. So whereas uh during we'll actually inject gameplay during this uh this game itself. So as you can see, there's a beach and there's a volcano. So halfway through the game, uh there's gonna be a volcano eruption, right? And somewhere down the line, there's gonna be a tsunami hitting the, the beaches. So the townsfolk who was planning all this building, they have to think into consideration all this disaster that might happen. And so they will actually place the more important buildings at certain locations where they think that uh, it's safer, right? And so on and so forth, okay? So some of the questions that we address in this game is that when we, when we finish this particular game itself, we will actually take a look at some of the places where actual towns are built. So the question will be for them is that why are certain towns or city built in risky areas? So for example, there are a high risk area where there's earthquakes happening maybe uh, frequently, okay, I won't say yearly, okay, maybe frequently, right? And there are still major towns that's built around there. And we know that this earthquake does happen and it's going to impact the town itself. So why are we still risking life and building our towns there? Why not relocate to somewhere else, right? Why not go to somewhere safer where there's no earthquake or no natural disaster, okay? So they will realize that there are constraints uh, for the people or for the government when they are building certain things because of resources, because of land space, or because of availability of the land, maybe certain lands are not uh, available. Although it's safe, it might not be easy to construct a town from there. Like maybe it's very um, marshy area, the, the foundation is not good and so on and so forth. So from here, they actually explore the different areas, right? That uh, what it takes actually to build a proper town. Okay. So yeah, so this game actually involves a lot of discussion and so on and so forth uh, between the, the, the people that's playing because they, they will usually argue with each other, like, uh, where should I place this building? Okay, why not place it there? Okay, so there are people who actually place, uh, let's say, for example, fishermen's, fishermen's uh, jetty right at the volcano. And the rest will be saying that, hey, it doesn't make sense. We should put the jetty actually right at the beach, right? Because that's where the boat goes out. If I put a volcano, the boat don't go out. But 
uh, some will be saying because it's cheap, right? So it doesn't have to make sense at this point of time, right? So it's actually for them to actually argue and talk about it, right? Okay, so after we play finish SimCity, right? We will actually move on to this game called Save Grandma. Okay, so I'll tell you why called Save Grandma, right? So this game is actually quite a fast-paced game. So once, once we are finished, done with SimCity, we actually move the tiles out, space it out, and you will see that there are actually black lines with arrows placed between each tile, right? Okay, so these lines, these black lines, they are actually your roads, right? They're actually your roads. So each family, so we'll usually pair the participants up uh, and actually each pair will be a family. So they'll place four of these tokens on each, uh, one on each tile. So four, four tokens. So you can see that there's a token here, red, for example, and the turquoise one. Uh, so they'll place one on each tile, right? So they have four families. So the scenario is that they will have a car with them. So the car represents themselves, right? They are the car. They are driving around the car. So a typhoon is going to hit your city, right? And your family is scattered all around the town. So your job is actually to pick up your family members, right? And go to the evacuation, evacuation center, right? Or you can choose to abandon your families and go to the evacuation center, center itself. So yeah, but that would be no fun, right? So the fun thing is they will try to actually evacuate their, all their families successfully and uh, reach the evacuation center. So how do they actually evacuate their families? Oh, sorry. So they, if I move back to the slide, okay, the first slide, you'll see that they have hooks. So each pair, they'll have this thing to hook their family member. So this actually poses uh, an additional challenge for them to fish their family members out, right? And after that, they have to shift, move their car to the next location to fish the next family member out. So one of the in interesting gameplay is that if you look at the roads, right? We set the rule such that uh, at each given time, the road can only be used by one car, so or one of this uh, user, right? So more often than not, when we are playing this, there is a huge traffic jam, which is what we see during a disaster or crisis, right? There's going to be a huge traffic jam where traffic can't move. So how are you going to move, find alternate ways to actually go about saving your family? And eventually, uh, as a typhoon comes nearer down the gameplay, right, the, one of the towels will be flooded and you'll be inaccessible anymore. So are you going to rescue that family member first or you're going to just leave him or her there alone, right, and rescue the rest, right? So one of the things that we actually do play in Save Grandma. So one, we also drop a lot of uh, random stuff. You can see that. Uh, so this represents like clothing, food, uh, medical supplies all around the towels. So they can actually feel free to pick up additional things if they want to, right? If they have the time, right? So this is actually Save Grandma. So I'm going to move on to the last slide, right? I know, I know I've been talking too much. <laughs> okay, so I'll try to talk less. So... The idea of this dynamic of games that is created is actually to encourage discussion, right? Because uh, one of the things that we realize in Singapore is that students are very quiet. So if you ask them a question, you can basically hear crickets chirping at the background, right? They'll be silent, nothing, nothing heard, okay? So through this game, which we have played with uh, maybe uh, 10 over schools, right? We realize that once the students are in the game, right? And they do not, do not see this as a classroom uh, setting, right? They start to talk and they start to discuss and they start to uh, actually come up with a lot of interesting suggestions and uh, ideas, right? So uh, the feedback from the teachers that uh, we get uh, we get from teachers is that the teachers actually do, do they are quite surprised to see the students actually this active and uh, talking about uh, issues, right? And they actually come up with some brilliant ideas. So one of the things, interesting things that uh, we do is that we do not, we do not uh, forbid cheating. Okay, so we, do, we allow cheating in this game, in these games that we play. So cheating meaning that if, if there's a rule that I did not state, right, and you sort of go into the gray area and sort of cheat, right, we allow that because that actually shows that the student is actually thinking and they actually do come up with interesting uh, suggestions. So for example, uh, okay, not for example, sorry. So one of the things that we observe, right, uh, during the gameplay also is that there is a gamer mentality versus a real life mentality. So for example, uh, using two farm, two furious, right? So there was once when we played, uh, there's a 90, for example, I think it was a 96% chance that the volcano is going to erupt. And the whole class, right? Actually, uh, of the whole class of maybe 30, 
29 of them chose to evacuate because it's a 96% chance. But one, one boy, one particular boy, actually chose to stay. So we were all quite surprised by the decision. So at the end of the day, the volcano did erupt and he sort of perished. So when we were asking him about his decision, why do you actually stay when there's a 96% chance uh, of eruption? This, this boy actually told us a heartwarming story. Okay? He, he was saying that, okay, you, you did tell me from the start that I'm a poor farmer working at the foot of this mountain, right? So to him, he said that if I'm a poor farmer, the farm is all I have left, right? All I have left. So if I evacuate, there is no promise that the government or anyone else is going to take care of me. I will lose everything, right? My farm, I will lose everything. Uh, it will be gone. I will, uh, yeah, so it's, there's no point staying alive. So I might as well stay there, take the chance, right? And see if I can survive this volcano eruption, right? So this is something that we get our students, which we find it quite uh, something that they don't actually experience in a classroom, yeah? In classroom setting, textbook examples itself. So we, we do hope that when we teach this uh, concept or we try to gamify some of these concepts, we can actually make it teaching and a learning more fun, right? So the students actually unknowingly learn or uh, absorb this concept without actually thinking that they are studying, but they're actually playing the game itself, right? So if you want to find out more, right, about these games, there's actually this uh, blog post that we wrote about the games when we, uh, when we were developing it, right? So, uh, and there's a YouTube channel that you can actually look at some of these games that we have. So I'm going to uh, post this link right in the chat group so that you can actually take a look at them. Uh, yep. And also uh, towards this ending part really, uh, we will hope that you can actually help us fill up this uh, survey form. Right, to let us know, okay, so maybe uh, you, was, you, you can give me some feedback about my presentation, right, or, or some of the contents that we have, or if you think that uh, you have some interesting game idea that we, you would like to share with us, that hopefully that there'll be collaboration, you can actually drop us an email inside the link also, right. So right up to now, okay, this is the end of my presentation. So yeah, maybe Laurent, do you have anything to Mention. I guess we have a few minutes left for anybody who has a burning question. You can turn your microphone on on mute you or the video. And if ever you have any comment or question, we can welcome them now. Anything really related to games, related to natural hazards, related to volcanic eruption, anything that you're curious to hear more about. Do some of you have experience with uh, design ga game design, for example? So we have a questions, questions on the chat, actually. Sorry, I missed that. Um, so, so, at the, so we have questions, I mean, regarding to how uh, we um, um, produce those games, whether we can export them to other markets, such as the Australian market. So thanks for this question. At the moment, those games, we can only play them at the Science Center. So we hold workshops. As John Wong said, it's because we, th we feel discussions and debates are very important. So we, we feel right now the workshop, con the workshop setting is the best for those games. But we are, because of most of it, the, the, um, the COVID situation, we are trying to explore how we can uh, make the games online. So hopefully in the next few years, that's our next project, we're trying to make those games online so it would, they would be available for everybody to play. There is another question about uh, whether we're making more games. So this is something we are working on as well. Uh, we've been working with students actually from Australia to develop uh, from the University of Melbourne to develop a game on earthquake. And we are hopefully going to work also with, with students from Singapore to develop some other games. So we, we are with them. So with students, of course, we cannot ask them to develop those very complicated ball games. 
but we ask them to develop like these uh, card games, such as Sneaky Volcano that you saw earlier. We, we really found when we go to conferences, events, or even classrooms, the card games are the easiest for students to bring along and to, to play with like in a, in a few minutes when we have only a few, few minutes with them. So maybe a question for you, Jian Hong. There is a question about the experience. Could you tell us about the experience with the edge of participants? Oh, okay. So I think the participants were in Singapore. They are normally secondary school students that we engage. So they are about uh, 15, 14 to 15 years old, right? So at this age, I think uh, they, are, they have interesting ideas. So <laughs> some of them are playing the games purely on uh, the idea of winning or losing. So they, they, don't, they don't care whether they die or not. So for example, one of the example that I can think of is two farm, two fears again. So for example, uh, there are, there's a chance that um, maybe 14% chance that the volcano does erupt, okay? So same thing, uh, in this particular scenario, we have like a group of students, everyone chose to stay and one person actually chose to evac, right? Then I asked him, so why did you choose to evac? So he said that because in the case that the volcano erupts, everybody dies, right? And I'm the sole survivor, I win. So, so they actually do come up with interesting ideas. But at the same time, they do go into more deep discussion with the teachers and with us also, like certain issues, or let's say, for example, like mailing, like when they're asking about evacuation bingo. So they were saying that, uh, is it true that, you know, uh, for example, if I leave my house, my house is going to get looted, right? Or shown on TV, right? And so on and so forth. But we actually check with our scientists, right? Uh, over there, they said that actually looting is something that is a myth, right? In terms of emergency or crisis when people are moving out, looting is actually not one of the concern of most of the people itself. So it's something that we see on TV, but it's not true. So it actually address some of the misconceptions that people have. Yeah. Okay. So is there any more questions? Oh, someone mentioned uh, should play with them during total defense or civil defense. So in Singapore, there's a total defense event. Yeah, we, we can we can explore that. So we are trying to bring this game out to more people, definitely. So one of the avenues that uh, we are working with is with uh, Ministry of Education, right? So we are looking to bring some of these games, if possible, to classes, right, to the schools itself. So we are still in the discussion phase, so it's nothing concrete yet. So how can people get involved well, we, we, do op we are open for uh, discussion and collaboration. So maybe you can drop us an email, right? And we can, we can definitely uh, have a collaboration if possible to design more games that's open, uh, open source, right? People can just take the resources and use it. So again, uh, in the feedback form, there is a, an email address that you can contact me directly if you have uh, more questions after this session. So please feel free. Um, if ever I need John Hong's help, uh, we will get back to you to any request. Thank you very much for joining. Yeah, thank you.